All right, so welcome to the first um, challenge in the Project Euler series. So this is going to be a bunch of programming and coding challenges that we're going to be doing. And it's basically just using um, programming to solve mathematical problems. So this is the first problem right here. And it's called multiples of 3 and 5. And what it says is that if we list all the natural numbers, so that, that are positive numbers, below 10 that are multiples of 3 or 5, so multiples of 3 or 5, we get 3, 5, 6 and 9, which makes sense because they're all divisible by either 3 or 5. And it says the sum of these multiples is 23. So if we do 3 plus 5 plus 6 plus 9, that's equal to 23 right here. So the problem is that um, given any number that we take in here, we have to find the sum of all the multiples of 3 or 5 below the provided number. So we have this function multiples of 3 and 5 right here. So let's write that out first. So let multiples of 3 and 5 equals. And so this is going to be our function and it takes in a number right here. And we have to find the sum of all the multiples of 3 and 5 between 0 and that number. And what I'm just going to do here is just test out our code right here. And I'm just going to test it out with um, 49, which is the first test right there. Okay, so um, the first hint at how I would go about tackling this is the fact that it says um, sum right here. So this sum means that we're going to be adding up numbers together. So the first thing I would do is I would create a sum variable and initialize this to zero. So we can say let, um, oops, let sum equals zero like this. So we have our sum variable and we can keep adding to this sum variable and what we can do is return it at the end like this. So um, if I were to run this, so I'm just going to use node because it's just a local file. Um, we should see that at the moment, yeah, it should return zero like this. Okay, so there are a bunch of ways to do it. Um, the e Both of these ways that I can think of would use a for loop. So the first way we can do it is we can um, go through all the multiples of 5 um, be below the number and add it to sum, then go through all the multiples of 3 um, between 0 and the number and add it to sum as well. So let's do that. So the first thing I'll have is um, a variable to go iterate through the for loop. And then I can have something like this. So I can say for i equals 0, i is less than number. So we'll go up to number. Or we could do i equals less than or equal to number, just in case the number is a multiple of 3 or 5. Actually, it says below the provided parameter value. So we have to do less than here. And what we want to do in each iteration is since we're working with multiples of 3, we can say i plus equals 3. Actually, uh, we can start this off at 3 right here because um, 3 is the false first multiple of 3. And what we can do here is basically do um, sum equals sum plus i like this. And we can do the same thing again for the multiples of 5. So we can do this here. We can start off with 5 and in each iteration here we can add 5. And we can add on i like this. So let's uh, test this out. So um, I'm going to try running this again. And it says uh, for multiples of 3 and 5, 49 should return 5, 4, 3. Okay, so that's gone a little bit over that. And the reason for that is because um, the multiples of some numbers are both multiples of 3 and 5. And what's happened is they've, the ones that are they've been added like twice in. So they've been added during this for loop and they've been added during this for loop. So this isn't necessarily the best strategy. So I'm going to try a different strategy and in this one what we're going to be doing is we're basically going to just go through every number and then check if it's either a multiple of 3 or a multiple of 5 and then if that's the case then add it. So this one would um, probably take a little bit longer because we're working through each number rather than known multiples but this way we can avoid errors with um, having the same number in, in the sum twice. Um, another thing you could do is have an array that keeps track of the numbers you've already added and um, 
make sure that we only add to that array if it doesn't exist already and in the end sum up all the numbers in the array. There's so many ways to do this problem but this is probably the simplest one so we can say from 0 to i is less than number and at each iteration we just want to increase i by 1 so we'll go through every single number from 0 to um, the number up there. Actually we can start this off at 1, it doesn't really matter. What we can say is if i is a multiple of 3, so the way we do that is saying i percentage 3 is equal to 0. So this just means when we divide i, this divides i and gets the remainder, and we want to make sure the remainder is 0, which means i is a multiple of 3. Or, so we can say or like this, and then we can say i percentage 5 is a multiple of 0. And the cool thing about this is we're only going through each i number once so we can basically ensure that the same number won't get added twice and what we can say is if it's either a multiple of three or a multiple of five and if it's a multiple of both this test will also pass what we can do is say sum equals sum plus i so we can add i to sum like this so let's try this one so um no demo.js and as we can see um, for multiples of 3 and 5 with 49 we get 543 and um, let's try it with 1000 so with 1000 that should be 233168 233168 then let's try it with um, 8456 And yeah, that looks right. And let's try it with the final value. This one right here. And let's run that. And we can see that it seems to have worked correctly. So yeah, this function right here should be the solution. So what I'm going to do now is just move it over to here. I hope I spelled it correctly. So again, what this does is it goes through every number from um, 1 to the the maximum number that we've taken in here. And if it's either a multiple of 3 or a multiple of 5, it will basically add it to the sum variable that starts off at 0, and at the end that sum variable gets returned. And if we go ahead and run the test now, we can see that it passes successfully, and we can go ahead and submit it.